And when Mr. Wilson drops the fire tone, they have under one minute to get in this gear. And now that's happening. And it's really heavy. Ooh. And if the patient is highly contagious, guess what? The nurses and doctors are adding another layer. And let me tell you, it is so hot under here. Coming up at 6, what DNR officers are doing to prepare for the 4th of July weekend. When you see flashing lights on the school bus and the stop sign extended, drivers should not go past the school bus or this camera and four other cameras will catch you and there will be a costly penalty to your driver's license and to your bank account. This is a mock-up seat of where Adam will sit on the spacecraft. The telescope will be mounted on the right-hand side and controlled by this tablet that Adam has developed. Google Glass is like wearing a computer and it's in this classroom where engineering students and the teacher are the first out of a few thousand to look through the lens. And Google says it's their feedback that will help shape the future of technology in the classroom. Would you want to go there and do it? I think I might pass too. Delta Tau Delta Fraternity is located off campus on Pickens Street, and they've had several violations this year, but this one in particular has closed the doors until fall of 2018. Palmetto Health Hospital has two quarantine rooms ready to go in the event that Ebola reaches the Midlands. Dr. Steve Shelton says the process is quite involved. This is dirty, so we've now stepped into dirty zone. This is where nurses and doctors are no longer clean, meaning they've come into contact with an Ebola patient. But before you can come in here, you have to be covered from head to toe in protective gear. The goal is to have complete coverage of your body. You don't want any chance of a virus making it to contact your skin. Once the hazmat suit is on, nurses and doctors are ready to treat the patient. So at this point, this is one of the patient rooms that we have. And you'll notice on the floor, we actually have a line marked as well as a door that will close to separate that area. This is the hot area where nurses will spend up to four hours each shift providing care. Now here it is. What I'm wearing is the personal protective equipment that nurses and doctors will put on in the event that an Ebola patient ends up here at Palmetto Health. And if the patient is highly contagious, guess what? The nurses and doctors are adding another layer and let me tell you, it is so hot under here. And now, the most important part of the process, taking off the gear so the virus doesn't spread. The nurse will step out of this area. And it's where doctors think two Dallas nurses were exposed to Ebola while taking off their equipment. It's a long process of taking off the gear, hand sanitizing and disposing of infected material. Palmetto Health Richland says they are prepared to treat Ebola in the Midlands. Laura Smith. Carolina News. I shouldn't have to bolt my stuff down on my porch or take it inside, but if you don't want it stolen. On Maple Street, Mark and Sherry Mims can't even live comfortably in their own home. Uh, we've been broken in several times. They've lived here for seven years and have filed five theft police reports, but not one arrest has been made. Our furniture on our patio was stolen and uh, my wife found that and uh, next thing you know she comes home and says the front porch was clean. Well however it was not clean it was the, the, the patio furniture was stolen. Sherry says she is disappointed with the Columbia Police Department. We've told them you know our house just seems to be a target for some reason and so they're like okay we'll make pick up you know patrol around your house and kind of keep an eye on it and they haven't shown up for that. And not the only ones frustrated, the Shannon Community Facebook page has blown up with comments. One writes, this seems to be a systematic pattern of theft in our neighborhood. Whatever happened to cops walking a beat? Just last night, a lady wishing to remain anonymous left me a voicemail saying a man was following her while walking her dog. I don't know, but he was clearly hiding behind the tree waiting for me. I mean, what is going on in this neighborhood? Melanie Matthews on Monroe Street had two planters stolen this past weekend. We were home, literally sitting inside the door the whole time when somebody walked off with them. Now I came to the City of Columbia Police Department to see what they had to say about this situation. They were unable to speak with me on camera. However, they say if you see any suspicious activity to always report it. I then reached out to the Richland County Sheriff's Department and they gave me some tips about what to do in this type of situation. Have your floodlights on from dusk until dawn. Make sure your stuff is close to the house and within view. Anything 
that's of value, like the holiday decorations and stuff. Make sure it's in view and in well-lit areas. Richland County Sheriff's Department does not have jurisdiction over the Shandon area, but is willing to help. For Mr. Mims, he is prepared to take matters into his own hands if the police does not. I refuse to have be violated like that again. If I am at home and they break in, God help them. Laura Smith, Carolina News. Okay, glass. Explore the stars. High school student Liam McGarry is a Google Glass explorer. It's a pair of glasses with a smartphone strapped to them. I mean. An explorer meaning he and his classmates are among the first in the nation to see what this futuristic and somewhat odd looking glass can do in the classroom. They listen to what you say, they respond, which is a little disorienting sometimes because it's this tiny little voice in the back of your ear. So it's like you can hear it, but nobody else can. McGarry is an aerospace engineering student at the Center for Advanced Technical Studies. It's really cool to be the ones that get to try it out first. Google Glass is a type of eyewear that communicates with the internet, takes pictures, videos, and responds to voice commands. Okay, Glass, take a picture. Dr. Martin Shakola is the instructor using Google Glass to teach. Um, Google Glass is great for doing things like doing hands-free video. Okay, all I have to do is say, OK, Glass video, and I'm recording a video at that particular point. So if we're doing anything hands-on, it's really easy for me to be able to make videos that I can then share with the students. Google Glass is like wearing a computer, and it's in this classroom where engineering students and the teacher are the first out of a few thousand to look through the lens. And Google says it's their feedback that will help shape the future of technology in the classroom. We contacted Google headquarters in California about its Google Glass program for students. Communication manager Anna Richardson White says the point of the Explorer program is to get glass in the hands of lots of different people and see how it can be used in the field of education. Al Gates, assistant director for the center, is thrilled their school was selected to participate. We are focused on creating the future by exposing kids to things that are cutting edge and looking at what's going to be available when you are 25, 35, 45. For the cost, it's an average $1,500 just for one. It's really cool to just be part of a technology that everybody doesn't have. He says they can't wait to buy more of these odd but fun wearable glasses. Laura Smith, Carolina News.